Hey there, this is Ari. Welcome back to the Energy Blueprint Podcast. In this episode, I am speaking with Beth Greer, who is an expert on toxins in the home environment. And she's going to be sharing some of her top strategies to get the toxins out of your home and create a clean, toxin-free home. So welcome, Beth. Such a pleasure to have you. Thanks. Great to be here. Yeah. So what is this this sort of broad landscape of toxins in our home? You know, we're, we're used to thinking about like toxins in tuna fish. We're used to thinking about maybe air pollutants in the air, um, you know, from coal factories and, 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 you know, gasoline from cars and things like that. A lot of people maybe don't look at their home as a source of toxins. So maybe kind of take us through that a bit. Yeah, um, that's a really good point. Um, so, yes. Basically, uh, I discovered that uh, I was toxic about, I'd say 18 years ago, I, I was, was diagnosed with a giant tumor in my chest. Um, and I thought, like, how could this happen to me? I thought I was doing everything right. I, I ate well, I exercised, I meditated, I you know, didn't smoke and uh, watched my weight and all that. And um, I went to three top surgeons. I had a biopsy that was a benign tumor but it was large. It was pressing on the nerves that ran down my arm and my first three fingers were turning numb. And um, I went to three top surgeons in the Bay Area where I live and they couldn't agree on you know, how to access this thing, but they said it needs to come out immediately and because it could turn cancerous at any minute. So um, one wanted to cut me under my collarbone, the second one under my armpit, and the third one said he was gonna remove one of my ribs from the back and he was gonna heal me. And, you know, I just thought this was kind of insane. Uh, so I, I needed some time to think, and I, I didn't really want to rush into surgery. So I, I went on a detox. Uh, I, it was a place down in San Diego called the Optimum Health Institute. Um, juice cleansing, colonics, that sort of thing. And in about three or four days, I noticed uh, doing this cleansing, I noticed that the pain that I was in started to diminish. And I... I I sort of asked him, why are you here? What's your message for me? And the word came back, um, simplify. And I realized that I was living in a very unsimple, unsimple life. Um, I was working very hard, a lot of stress. And the food I was eating was, um, while some of it was organic, I was eating out almost every day. I was microwaving my food, and that certainly wasn't a simple thing. And then... Um, I started looking at the things I put on my skin and I looked at the labels that um, people read food labels, but they very often don't read what's in their moisturizer, for example. And there was like a paragraph worth of um, ingredients in there. And with my background in journalism, I started doing research and I discovered that there's chemicals. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of these chemicals and especially in the fragrances that we're exposed to hundreds, maybe thousands of chemicals, you know, that we're bombarded with on a daily basis. Um, then I was cleaning with a bottle of Windex and I looked at the label on the back. It says precautionary statement, hazardous to humans and domestic animals right on the label. So this is something I grew up with. I thought, well, it must be safe, but it's, it's really not. And so I switched out to all natural products like baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, white vinegar, that sort of thing, non-toxic. Um, and you know what, in about, um, it took about nine months or so of, of, of detoxing and getting rid of all of these chemicals, chemical exposures, electromagnetic fields around me. Um, the tumor disappeared and um, I had it scanned and it was gone. And that was like a huge wake up call to me that our bodies are self healing. And I realized that we are all being exposed to an unbelievable amount of stress from, from all of these chemicals in our everyday products that we're unwittingly exposed to. So, so that's, that's my story. So that's when I wrote my book, Supernatural Home, and uh, I'm starting to educate people that, that we can improve our lifestyles, we can get more energy, we can get healthy if we start to just get rid of the, the, the stuff that's creating what I call body burden on us. You know, it's toxic to our livers, we don't detox well, and then where we set ourselves up for inflammation and chronic disease. Yeah, excellent. So, so what are these toxins that you're talking about? What are these toxins that uh, you know people are maybe not so aware of, and what should they focus on getting rid of? 
Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to focus on three areas: what goes in us, what goes on us, and what surrounds us. So the first one are um, in the in in the in category are food additives. So food additives, you know, according to the Center for Science and the Public Interest, they say that most food additives are unsafe and haven't really been tested well. Um, the food additive, there's two that are, are really are of concern to me that I want to talk about today, artificial food dyes being the first one. So um, they've done studies in Europe that show that um, giving an artificial food dyes to children will cause temper tantrums even in um, normal kids, you know, without uh, ADHD, for example, or autism. So um, I worked with a child who had um, terrible, you know, ADHD symptoms, emotional outbursts. He was had hyperactivity. He had anxiety, very low stress tolerance. Uh, he was on Concerta as a med, and he was eating, like, unbelievable amount of foods that containing food dyes, and preser plus preservatives and additives, which are, you know, another part of the, the food additive. So a typical lunch for him would be something like macaroni and cheese and orange soda and a little bag of Skittles. And while um, the, the studies show that oh, it would take 50 milligrams of artificial food dyes to cause a reaction, this lunch had over 100, different, 100 milligrams of food dyes. So, and multiply this by three times, you know. Um, in addition, he was having, um, children's claritin, the allergy um, medication with food dyes in it, um, cough syrup, and his vitamins had food dyes. Uh, you know, it, food dyes are made with from petroleum products and coal tar. And in Europe, the, the food dyes have a warning label on them. And here they're, they're not. Um, they're manufacturers are allowed to put whatever they want in our, in our food pretty much. Um, so it, in 2018, FDA banned seven food additives, including some colors and flavors that are found in candy, ice cream, gum, and soft drinks. And some, they say, have caused cancer in lab animals. But um, back in 2018, manufacturers, they, FDA said, you have two years to find replacements. Well, I haven't seen anything yet of any replacements. So this is a bit troubling. Um, if you go to Europe, um, McDonald's, for example, their strawberry sundaes are, are colored with strawberries. And here they're using dyes like red dye number 40, for example. Um, they're like their Fanta soda, they're colored with uh, pumpkins and carrot extract. And here, again, red dye number 40, yellow dye number six. These are very toxic substances that really impact uh, our behavior. Um, this child was also taking Flintstone vitamins and artificial colors, artificial flavors, aspartame. I mean, this is something that most parents, you know, are buying off the shelf and they think that it's safe for their kids. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just um, interject one little thing here because I've seen some research on this showing that certain, at least certain of the um, artificial food dyes, artificial colors in the food supply are, are directly toxic to mitochondria. And so there's, there's a very direct connection here with, um, with, with energy levels. So um, yeah, I, I think this is a really interesting topic that I think is a little old school. Like people used to talk about f artificial food coloring, like in the right. 80s and 90s. That's and then the fine gold diet. Remember that? Yeah. I yeah. remember 20 years ago, uh, yes. people were talking about it. And then, you know, health experts, including, I, and I take responsibility, including myself, kind of stopped talking about this so much. So it's, I think it's an important message to, to keep talking about this. Great. Yeah. Well, Great, I, I agree. Uh, I think it's kind of a, sort of a hidden thing that um, people are just not aware of. Um, mm -hmm. So a safe substitute would be, you know, this is a Nordic berries. Um, they just use. Uh, I have the uh, slide here. There, um, it's just made with. There's no artificial food dyes or anything in it. Um, this is an example of a Jiffy blueberry muffin mix, and I, I was reading the label, and it said it's. It's, it's, it's colored with artificially flavored imitation blueberries. I thought, like, what the, heck? you know, what, red 40, blue two, blue number one, partially hydrogenated oil, which, you know, is trans fat. So, um, you know, I give talks at schools and, I, and some of the moms said, I just made this for my kid. And, you know, it's like, 
so interesting to me that um, people are not paying attention to the mm -hmm. fruit dyes. So, you know, a, a safe alternative would be to make a muffin and use real blueberries. Hello, <laughs> not so hard, but you really want it to be um, organic. Yeah. So Gatorade is another one that um, is colored. And, you know, I, I talked to so many um, athletes and people who work out in the gym and this is their go-to drink, but it's filled with red dye 40 and blue number one. So a safe alternative would be getting some fizzy water and some fresh, you know, lemons and oranges and maybe, or maybe coconut, coconut water is really great. Um, another Another thing that I wanted to add in terms of these food additives is, is glyphosate. Um, I'm actually producing a film now on the hazards of glyphosate, which is found in Roundup. And um, it's one of the most widely used uh, weed killers on the planet. And the problem now is that farmers are allowed to spray um, wheat and corn and oats that are not organic as a drying agent. They were allowed to spray, spray Roundup on, on these crops as a drying agent. So it's not just a weed killer. So this is really insane if people are not eating organic, um, that they're getting a big dose of glyphosate. So there's this researcher from MIT. Um, her name is Stephanie Seneff, and she talked about this very strong correlation between the use of glyphosate on, on our crops and the wide range of um, uh, of incidences of neurological diseases, including autism, ADHD, anxiety, dementia, as well as suicide. So I just have a couple of slides that I wanted to show, um, like autism. And, and just for uh, people listening who are not necessarily watching the video, we'll do our best to describe what's being displayed in the, in the slide here. Yeah, so basically, uh, starting in, it's, the slide starts out like 1995 and goes up to, to uh, 2010. So the rate of autism uh, in six-year-olds, you know, it goes way up and it's almost in the exact line as, as uh, glyphosate uh, introduction, you know, being sprayed on the corn and soy crops. And the next slide is, is about breast cancer and glyphosate. Um, the diagnosis of breast cancer and the and the glyphosate applied to corn and soy. So, what people really need to know is that um, corn and soy, uh, I'd say ninety percent of the crops that are not organic are are sprayed with glyphosate and they're genetically modified. So you're getting a double dose of trouble because um, you're getting genetically modified food organisms that our bodies really don't know how to recognize or handle very well. Um, and there's a lot of data on that. And then you're getting the glyphosate on top of that. Um, this is one on a dementia, senile dementia. And, you know, the, the graph is, is almost identical of deaths per 100,000 and then the, the, uh, the glyphosate used on corn and soy. And then the last one is on diabetes. So um, it's, it's shocking and um, it's something to pay attention to. And there are... Um, a test you can get, a urine test. People are interested, they could contact me. Um, you don't need a prescription from a doctor. Uh, I work with a lab, and so you can get your urine tested to see if you, how much glyphosate is, it, is in your urine. And the good news is that when you switch to organic food, um, your, your levels drop dramatically of all pesticides. Mm. So, are, you, um, are you aware of um, any particular way to get rid of glyphosate from the body? I mean, aside from not continuing to consume uh, foods right. containing glyphosate, are you aware, like, let's say somebody takes the test, they find they, they have high glyphosate levels in their body. Is there anything out there that has shown to, to help chelate it or not, chelate's not the right word, but to, to help sort of bind it and pull it out of the body? Yeah, there's a bunch of different products. One, I mean, one really good thing to do is to, is to do saunas far infrared sauna, when you sweat, um, a lot of toxins are coming out of your body. And so it's important though, that when you do do a sauna that you rinse off immediately um, because the, it can reabsorb back into your skin afterwards. Um, so yeah, there are, um, there are definitely products out there. There are binders, there are um, um, just cleansing products, uh, body detoxification products and if people want to talk to me, that's what I do. I, I can help them to detox from that. There are some very simple ways to do it. 
Um, moving your lymph is a really great idea, you know, getting on a rebounder, for example. So um, taking charcoal pills is, is another one. Mm -hmm. um, the film that I'm working on is called A New Resistance, and there's a website called anewresistance.com if you want to find out more about it. And um, Nice. So then, oh, and, go ahead. And, and sorry, so just in case it's not clear, so what is the, the film about? It's about glyphosate and Roundup and how toxic it is and how it needs to be stopped and people need to become aware of it and and fight against uh, Monsanto in in changing in changing what what they're doing because there are safe alternatives out there but um, you know the fact that not only is it being used as a weed killer but it's also being as I said used to to dry the crops it's it's very it's very troubling. Um, they're putting it on our, our parks, they're putting it on, you know, the, the school fields and they're spraying it um, in, in the highways. And, you know, we're just, we're getting, we're getting bombarded with it. And um, it, as I show those graphs, I mean, there's a huge correlation you can see between those diseases and, um, and the glyphosate. So mm -hmm. yeah. something we need to get out of our environment. Yeah. So glyphosate and artificial food coloring are the yes. ones you're, you're emphasizing when it comes to toxins that are coming in to our body from the foods we're eating. Correct. What I mean, about, what about yeah. the stuff that we're putting on our bodies? Yeah. So that's my next, that's my next, uh, I, I want to talk about um, the on, but, and that includes fragrance because so much of the fragrance we're, we're being exposed to we're putting on we're we're putting on our skin or spraying it in our hair or using it as deodorant. Um, so ninety eight percent of skincare and cosmetics products contain ingredients that were never evaluated for safety by the FDA. And I think that's a really key point to understand and remember. I'm going to repeat it. Ninety eight percent of skincare and cosmetic products contain ingredients that were never evaluated for safety by the FDA. So they you know manufacturers can put almost anything they want into a product and we have to be smart consumers and start reading labels so you, you know i i remember as a kid growing up i remember to that i knew about the fdi fda and you know that certain ingredients were for example banned and couldn't be used in in the food supply or in cosmetic products and things like that and so my i, I re literally remember being a kid thinking you know, if they're making these products and they're allowed to put these ingredients in, it must be because all every one of these ingredients has been studied. Right. Uh, they've exposed it to humans in large doses for 20 years, and we know what the the consequences of this are, and we know it's safe. And as I've you know actually looked into this, as you know, you, we realize that isn't the case at all. I mean, the yeah. vast majority of the chemicals have. Have, have in many cases are introduced years before they there's ever any long term safety data in either animals or humans yes. uh, that's that's good relevant data and and then we find out like five years after something was introduced oh yeah it turns out this is really toxic yeah and you know sometimes they'll they'll test one chemical but they're not testing the synergy of all the chemicals in in the you know when have you ever seen you know a product that just has one one chemical and it's very rare usually there's a a whole cocktail of chemicals and they're not they're not testing that and right. that's where you know we get into trouble yeah yeah i remember like the the bpa thing it you know it turned out oh you know all this plastic that's all over our you know our water bottles our food products our um everything we have bpa in it and then it it became known that bpa was toxic and so we started to see the emergence of the BPA free plastics, and then it right. turned out, oh, the BPA free plastics have BPS in it. Right. It's a related compound that's, that's just as bad or maybe even worse. That's true. It hasn't been really tested. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's troubling. I know. Yeah. That's, yeah, glass and metal are, are best, you know, for drinking water and all that. So, yeah. yeah, most of us use about 15 products a day. And so we have to really, um, start to think about what happens in our bodies when we're exposed to these and they're synthetic chemicals. You know, they're not, it's not just saying I'm taking some fresh this or that and mixing it together. They're synthetic. So um, there are three main um, chemicals that I want people to know about that are, are hormone disrupting chemicals. Uh, one, one are called phthal phthalates as with a pH, but it, it it's found in fragrance. It makes fragrance last longer. So let's say, 
if you've ever been in an elevator and some someone comes on, you know, man or woman with cologne or whatever, and then when they leave, they, they leave that fragrance with you, that's because of the phthalates. Um, it's in nail polish, it prevents it from chipping, and it's in mascara, it prevents the, the mascara from running. The second one are, are called parabens, and those are preservatives in makeup and shampoo. So look for words like methyl, paraben, pa you know, propyl paraben, that sort of thing. And the third one is triclosan, which is in antibacterial soap. Um, the thing that people need to know is that it's even in toothpaste. So Colgate Total Toothpaste contains triclosan, which is wow, I didn't know that. very toxic. And, you know, here dentists are like handing it out because they get samples from these manufacturers and then they think they're doing their patients a, a good deed. But now, now, if I'm not mistaken, isn't triclosan one of those ingredients that, that we were kind of just referring to that was on the market for a decade or two and then... Now they've pulled it off the market because they realized it's it's toxic. Yeah, I, I think they've pulled it out of certain things, but I think you can okay. still buy a hand sanitizer that contains it. So, really? and as far as I know, it's still in Colgate Total. So, oh wow, yes. Um, so I had a client um, who was 58 years old, living in Georgia. Um, she has constant nasal congestion, runny nose, cough, insomnia. She was on antihistamines. She was on Flonase. She was on an inhaler cough syrup and um i went to her home you can buy an it's called an agrometer you can measure your humidity and um her humidity in her home was 60 percent which um it was very high it, it can cause mold growth number one so that that was part of her problem but the other one um she had excessive use of um scented products like when i walked into her bedroom I was overcome with the fragrance and she said, I don't smell anything. So, you know, what happens is they, people get acclimated to, to these uh, scents. And when you see the word fragrance on a label, it can mean up to a hundred different synthetic chemicals. And I spoke to a, um, a chemist recently and he said, no, Beth, you're wrong. It's not a hundred. It's, it could be a thousand. And I was, you know, I just think that's kind of insane, but, um, he, he was the scientist. But um, so I have some pictures of, you know, she had uh, scented candles everywhere. And the thing about scented candles are um, they have, most of them have these wicks that have um, metal in it to keep the, um, the wick burning longer and it keeps, it keeps it straight. But what I realized, I did some research, that metal is made from lead. And so oh. when I looked up at her ceiling, she had black soot up on her ceiling. So here she's breathing in not only the fragrance of the candles, but the lead is, is really not good. And wow, she, I, I didn't know that, that they embed lead into the wicks. Very interesting. Yeah. So you want to look for cotton wicks, just 100% cotton ones. And, um, and you, you can find... Um, but the know, flame is just not the same when it doesn't have lead in it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So she was using perfume and she had like a whole bunch of stuff for her hair. Everything was scented. It was, it was almost like she was addicted to scents. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's feminine care products that, that sprays and washes and wipes. Those are scented. She was using those. She had uh, air fresheners. She had plugins. She had stuff in her car. Uh, it's just, it was fascinating. Um, she even had scented, um, uh, not laundry bags, but garbage bags, hefty, lavender and sweet vanilla scent. I mean, is, can you imagine? It's it's kind of insane when you think about it. And then yeah. in her laundry, she had like Bounce and Downy. It was all, all these scented products. So uh, at first I said, you know, I said, well, this is your problem, the scented candles. And she was like, really um, didn't want to hear about it. She said, these relax me. These were expensive. I, I like the smell. I take them into the bathtub with me, you know, and, um, but I convinced her to just we put him, everything in a bag and I just put everything into another room and uh, just sort of cleared. She didn't, she wouldn't let me take him out of the house. Was, and by another room, do you mean the dumpster? <laughs> no, I wish, right? <laughs> no, it was a room down the hall that was closed. You know, they had a very big home in, um, in, in down Atlanta, but mm -hmm. I, she wouldn't let me take it out of the house initially. Because, but then, you know, when, when her symptoms went away, she stopped using Flonase and antihistamines and all this stuff and, her, and the codeine cough syrup. So she finally got rid of everything. She finally, you know, agreed. Sometimes you just need to see the proof before you make the change. So yeah. 
Um, Absolutely. So some, some safe example, safe alternatives, you know, beeswax candles are lovely. Um, and you can use potpourri that, um, that you make yourself, you know, from dried flower petals. And I like putting on the stove maybe some orange peel and apples and cinnamon. You know, you can make a beautiful scent in your home. Um, and then using baking soda, white vinegar. Um, I use baking soda as a, as a deodorant, actually. I put it in a salt shaker and I sprinkle it on my palm and I put it under my armpits. And it works great. So I clean my floors with a combination, a mixture of uh, white vinegar, like a cup of white vinegar to a, a, a bucket of water, warm water, and clean my wood floors. And it's, it works. So um, let's see, you can get, you know, a good quality HEPA air filter. Um, it's important to wet or damp cloth uh, to, to, um, to dust and um, watch, really watch out for fragrances. And, Another thing to do is you can get um, house, house plants are really great. They clear the air. NASA did a study. Um, I have all the plants listed in my book, um, but you know, NASA did a study and talked about how these house plants will pull toxins like benzene and formaldehyde even out of the air, the stuff that's been leaching from your furniture or your ki kitchen cabinets. And I always recommend people get a good doormat and wipe, wipe your feet so you don't bring in these toxins into your home. And um, I ask people to take their shoes off and, and wear socks. I give people, I have some pretty socks, you know. <laughs> so, so that's, um, that's that. And then um, I want to And then you have people who are like, I'm not going to that crazy lady's house again. <laughs> she makes me wear her socks. <laughs> no, I, we, we, do, we do the same. I mean, if we have people coming over to our house to, to do work or something like an electrician or we had a, a blind a window blind repair guy come over the other day. Uh, uh, they they always wear, we have booties, you know, we bought right. like a whole set of booties, especially for whoever needs to come into our house. Right. I mean, but what about your friends when they come over for dinner and you have kids? Crawling Shoes off. off. Shoes yeah. off. But Shoes we don't, off. we don't give them any new different socks than the ones they're already wearing. <laughs> oh, okay. that's, I, I would if I could, but I'm afraid that they would just call me crazy. <laughs> well, because I, ha I had someone over the other day and, and I asked her to take a shoe and then she said her feet were cold. So luckily I had these soft, you know, fuzzy socks. So she was happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. So I want to talk about um, the final thing, what surrounds you. And that would be electromagnetic fields um, because we are, uh, we use electrical impulses to communicate between ourselves. We are electrical beings. And so electromagnetic fields really suppress our immune system and can disrupt our sleep. And I'm talking about um, not just the Wi-Fi and the cell phones, which, which are bad too, but also the electricity. Like, so what I've been doing lately is actually unplugging all of the um, plugs that are, were plugged into my outlets in my bedroom. And I noticed a dramatic difference in my sleep just by doing that. So I unplugged, you know, I had, um, a, a diffuser in there and I had my, my lights, my side table lights, just pulled them out. Um, I don't charge my phone in my bedroom anymore. And I'm telling you, just that little thing has made a big difference in my sleep. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to share a, a story about this young boy. Um, he was 11 years old. He, his mom called me and she said he was waking up uh, for two years every morning with headaches. And she took him to several doctors. She, she had a brain scan done on him. And um, when I came in the home, I was like, what am I going to find? Because shoes were off. She used only vinegar, you know, uh, non-toxic cleaners. There were no scents in the house, which could be a trigger for headaches. So um, I, w I walked around and in his bedroom was a giant air purifier. And it was right next to his head. And I used three different meters and I had this Gauss meter and it really measured a very high field. So I said, why do you have this so close to his head? And she said, well, he has grass allergies and I thought the closer the better. So we just moved it six feet away and the fields drop off because distance is key with any kind of electrical unit and um, device. And the next morning she called me up. She was literally in tears. She said, this is the first morning in two years that he woke up without a headache. And wow. this was just moving this thing away from him. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a great investment. I have a, uh, a, a, an EMF measuring device as well for magnetic fields and electric fields. 
And every time I do anything with an electric device, I always measure the fields and yeah. see what, at what distance uh, away from it, the fields completely drop off. And yes. it, like I have an air purifier in my bedroom as well. And it, you, you can measure elevated fields within about three feet away from it. I have it about six feet away from the bed. Yeah, that's smart. And you know, some, I noticed that some brands are just higher than others. Um, For sure. I, yeah. yeah. And so you just don't know. So measuring is a great idea. Now, one home I went into, the child wasn't sleeping and there was a huge field on the wall next to the crib. And I said, what's behind the wall? And it was the garage and they had a giant refrigerator with a motor right there. Oh, wow. So we just moved the crib across the, the way and the baby slept, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so cell phones, you, you don't want to be wearing them on you, especially your women in their bras, dangerous. Um, and the other thing, I don't know if you're aware of cordless phones have a higher feel that I found than, than even cell phones because. You know, I haven't even seen a cordless phone or a corded phone in God knows how many years. Everybody oh, switched to cell phones. It's true. Yeah. Everyone switched to cell phones, but some people want to have a, um, a, a phone at home and um, I'm not quite sure what, well, because the thing is that it's it's electronic also, so you, it's not even like it's plugged into the wall. So if there was a power outage, this goes out too. But the um, the cordless phones have a very high field, and they're constantly the base station and the handheld are communicating like all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and if you're in between there, you know you're getting a big dose of that. Yeah. So cordless phones are something to kind of try to eliminate, and um, and then. I would definitely shut off your uh, Wi-Fi at night, and um, if you if you can, you know, for people who really have trouble sleeping, I recommend that they sh they take the circuit breaker and shut it down in the bedroom if if all else fails. So um, I have a free ebook uh, that I wanted to let people know about called um, if they go to supernaturalmom.com slash emf ebook. Um, they can download my my free ebook and it will give you tips on on both um, EMFs and what to do and also uh, I have some information there about the coming 5G uh, situation which is it's challenging you know we're we're going to be bombarded with even more stuff that's why it's so important to keep our immune systems strong and healthy um, eating live real food and and avoiding stress as much as possible getting out into nature breathing clean air yeah absolutely beth this has been awesome thank you so much for presenting this material it was you know half an hour of power packed information with lots and lots of really great practical tips in here uh, right. to clean up your home environment clean up your 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 I was going to say intake, but that's not the right word. Clean up how many toxins are, are entering your body. Mm -hmm. um, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much, Beth. And, okay, thank um, you. Hey there, this is Ari again. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you found it valuable, please share it with your friends, share it with your family. Help me get the word out there. Also, if you're on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell to get notifications every time we release a new video or new episode of the podcast. And if you're listening to this, make sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or on your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for supporting my work at the Energy Blueprint. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you in the next.